In this video note, I'd like to talk about reference parameters from Chapter 8. Now, we know reference parameters as parameters passed on the runtime stack from a calling program to a subroutine that contain the addresses of data that's known in the calling program. So these addresses are put on the stack, and the subroutine is not interested really in changing the value of the contents of the stack, but it wants to use those addresses to access the data that the data is located at. It's like giving somebody the address of something so that you can know where to find it and where to change it. Of course, we use this very often for arrays because we don't really want to copy the entire array onto the runtime stack, so we'll pass this address instead. It could be dangerous because the address could be incorrect, so you might be passing an invalid pointer. The subroutine could cause the program to to halt because it accesses an invalid memory location. And the other thing is, from a data encapsulation point of view, it's a little dangerous to have subroutines that can modify data in other subroutines. But it can be useful because it does allow you to return multiple values from a subroutine. So, of course, normally you, a function would return only one value, but when you have more than one to return, you can pass addresses of variables the subroutine then can modify those variables as a way of returning data. Passing large objects to subroutines, like arrays, is much more effective if you pass their addresses. So here's an example from the book. We have this little procedure called array fill that's going to fill up an array with integers. And here you can see how we're calling it. So we have an array, which is called array. We're going to push its offset on the stack, push a second parameter called count, that tells us how many uh, values are in the array, and then call array fill. So if we look at the stack frame as we're coming into array fill, it looks fairly familiar. You can see our two stack parameters here um, in the order in which they were pushed. And then we have the return address, and we have EBP, the base pointer, which is going to allow us to reference those uh, parameters. Inside array fill, what we need to do here, of course, is to be able to get the offset of the array and the array length. So these two instructions here are designed to do that. We'll use ESI as an index um, parameter and use ECX as a counter. So uh, inside the loop here that you see, um, we're just generating random values between 0 and 99,000, actually 0 and FFFF hexadecimal. And uh, when we're done, will restore the stack and return. You may recall that this 8 over here tells us to remove two integer parameters from the stack so that we return the stack to its original stack pointer to its original value. So this is a fairly effective way of dealing with an indirect operand. And the one I'm speaking, of course, is this one right here that's in the ESI register. So now let's uh, uh, go on to the next step. And that would be to use uh, an instruction that allows us to get the address of the indirect operand. You might say it's almost like getting a pointer to a pointer. This is something that can only be done at runtime. See, normally you can't use the offset operator to get the address of a stack parameter. Offset only works with addresses that are already known at compile time. So what we're doing here is we're actually using area that we've set aside on the stack to hold an array. This instruction right here, LEA ESI EBP minus 30, is referencing a stack location as a local variable, since there's a minus sign there. And uh, what we're doing is getting that into ESI because we then want to loop through the array, and you can see ESI being used here, to fill up this array with the star character. Now, there's no great purpose to this um, subroutine right now. It's really designed just to show a concept. But in order to get that location, EBP minus 30, the only way we could do it is to use the LEA instruction. So LEA means load effective address, and it involves a runtime calculation of an address. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Thank you very much.